Catalan football is looking like it's back on the up. With Barcelona back as players in the transfer market, well, maybe Espanyol able to stay around in the first division after getting promoted a season ago, and Girona back in the first division for the second time in their history via a sixth place finish down in the second division and winning via the playoffs. No Madrid-based teams were sent down last season, so that means the Spanish capital still has better representation, including Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid, Hedafe, and Rai Vallecano. But Catalonia's three teams next season are going to be tied for the most ever once again. The closest it came to being four was actually the 1949-1950 and 1950-51 seasons, when Gymnastique was relegated and Yeda was promoted. But don't worry, we'll have plenty of that history stuff today. I hope you came to learn something today, because with our recent history about Johan Cruyff, I've really been thinking a lot about Catalan history, the role, yeah, Johan Cruyff had played in it, sure, but the history of Catalan football dates back decades before Johan Cruyff, so I felt like the appropriate place to start was at the very beginning, and this is the history of Catalan football. Let's do it. While there won't be many images available throughout this video, of course, we're talking about history, 100 to 120 years ago, we still have to start at the very beginning. And we start with the oldest football club in Catalonia, in Palamos Club de Football, founded in 1898. Very similar to many of the origins of the Basque clubs, it was founded by someone who had studied in England. Like many smaller Spanish clubs, they have been on the brink of closing their doors on a number of occasions, even going six years between 1954 and 1960 without playing a match. The glory years came from 1989 to 1995, where the team from Costa Brava played six seasons in the second division, before succumbing again to their financial reality and finding themselves dropped to the fourth division. At present time, they play in the Primera Catalana, the sixth division of Spanish football and the highest league in Catalonia. Their most famous three players are probably Albert Roca, the recent fitness coach under Ronald Koeman, the Argentine Carlos Afaro Moreno, and the former Andorran national team center back Anthony Lima. As will be a theme moving forward with this, not every club does survive. Even though Palmeiras has found a way to stay up, the next club we're going to talk about, that being the oldest from the city of Barcelona, did not. Yes, just one month before Juan Gamper formed FC Barcelona, Catala SC was formed, playing regularly with only Catalans and were early members of the Catalan Football Association, with more on that later. Catala CS did eventually bring in some foreign players from Scotland, but they weren't enough to save them from relegation in 1915 a very disappointing negative 60 goal differential and zero points in eight games. They played in the Catalan Football Championship for a few seasons, but 1920 would be their last and the club was dissolved. Shortly thereafter, Hispania Athletic Club was formed in 1900, peeling off members of Catala CS who were unhappy with the way that things were going over there. Their first match ever was against FC Barcelona, a match they won 2-1. Hispania also benefited from foreign players and the dismantling of other clubs, as they were able to bring in Scottish workers from the Fabra and Coates to San Andreu factory after dissolving of Eschos FC. In November of their first year, they had their rematch with FC Barcelona, this tied to inaugurate Barca's new field near the Hotel Casanovas, a result that ended in a scoreless draw. Unfortunately, I don't have a name for this field for you because remember, Barca's first official home, the Camp de la Industria, didn't come until 1909. Hispania's biggest claim to fame is being the first winners of the Copa Macaya, before we get to that tournament, we have to discuss the formation of the Catalan Football Federation, an organization that still exists today. So in the fall of 1900, the final four of the four teams that originally formed the Football Asociada de Catalunya in November was Sociedad Española de Football, which today, after some name changes, is better known as Espanol. The first federation president was Edward Ellison, and he oversaw the birth of sanctioned Catalan football competitions. And the story, of course, starts with the Copa Macaya, named for Espania's honorary president, Afonso Macaya, who donated the Macaya Cup trophy for what was the first regulated football competition in Spain. Any team in Spain could register, but due to travel, only one non-Barcelona-based team registered, that being Club Tarragona. Espania, Barca, and Espanyol were also joined by Sociedad Franco Española and Sociedad Deportiva Santanach, who withdrew from the tournament prior to its start. So in January of 1901, the Copa Macaya began at Barcelona's field at the Hotel Casanovas. Sociedad Franco Española were not long for this world, losing 10-0 and 14-0 to España, and 13-0 and 14-0 losses to Barcelona. Tarragona with two 5-0 losses to España, and 14-0 and 18-0 losses to Barca, and Espanyol withdrew after the first round, contesting suspicious refereeing in favor of España after losing to them 2-0. That left the final match to be played between the two favorites coming in, Hispania and Barca, 
at Espana's new home on Montaner Street in April. A Barca own goal gave Espana the early lead, but the competition's top scorer, Juan Gamper, then still known as Hans, scored his 31st goal of the competition to draw at level. With Espana only needing a draw to win the Copa Macaya, a second Barcelona goal was ruled offside, and Espana won the first competition in Catalan football history. The bad news for Espana? Captain and top player Gustavo Green soon left for Barcelona. A move that, if it had gone the other way, could have very well changed the outcomes for these different clubs. They also lost two other key pieces, but were still favorites for the 1902 version of the competition. The club president became Allison, a famous fencing teacher in the city, and the man who, as I previously mentioned, became the first president of the Catalan Football Federation as it's known today, in collaboration with Juan Gamper. While the second edition of the Copa Macaya still had Espana and Barcelona as the favorites, it was the latter who wound up conquering everybody, that being Espana on both occasions, and they won all their other games in the competition, winning the first ever trophy in FC Barcelona's history. For Espana, after not having the funds to travel to the Copa de la Cornacion, they dissolved the next season due to a lack of players. By the way, the Copa de la Cornacion was a competition held in Madrid, which saw Barca beat Madrid CF for the first time ever in their first unofficial meeting ever and a select group called Biscaya, made up of the best from the Basque country, beat Barca 2-1 in the final, Barca's only loss of the season. Next came the Copa Barcelona in 1903, which FC Barcelona also won. Their only non-wins in the competition came with two 2-2 two, two draws with Espanyol, a precursor to their budgeting rivalry, one that I don't really think would hit its real timber until decades later. But it must be said, by that point, Espanyol was gaining a little bit of steam, having won the 1903 Copa Macaya, which was the last version of that competition. It was at that point that the Campeonato Catalunya, which I'll be calling the Catalan Football Championship from here on out, was formed officially by the Catalan Football Federation. This competition would feature 36 different teams, from 1903 to 1940, with the winners also representing Catalonia in the Copa del Rey, named in honor of King Alfonso XIII and the successor to the Coronation Cup that had taken place a year before to celebrate, well, his coronation. But back in Catalonia, the Catalan Football Championship should be remembered as the way the Catalan clubs became professional. In 1917, the league officially turned professional and also added a second division. From the 1903-04 season to the 1939-40 season, both won by Espanyol, by the way, there were only five clubs that actually win the Catalan Football Championship. Barca won it 21 times, Espanyol 11, CE Europa once, CE Sabadell FC once, and three times by a club called FC España de Barcelona, who won it three times. FC España had their glory years from the 1910s, winning the competition in 1913, 1914, and 1917. In 1914, they even made the Copa del Rey final, leading to Athletic Club, having lost to another Basque side, racing to Irene, in the semi-final the year before. It's at this point that I should mention that the Basques were at the top of the footballing world, well, at least in Spain, 100 years ago. In typical fashion of the time, FC España saw a decline when the players left and even a name change at Garcia FC in 1923, which couldn't save them from relegation. They merged with CE Europa in 1931, becoming Catalonia FC, but had to cut their 1931-32 season short by three games due to financial issues. Prior to the start of the next season, they became CE Europa and FC España were officially a part of history. Speaking of a part of history, this is where things do overlap a little bit and get somewhat confusing, as teams like FC Barcelona and Espanyol were now competing in multiple competitions. As a little aside, there was technically a sixth team to win the Catalan Championship, a team called X Sporting Club that won three straight titles from 1906 to 1908. In 1909, many of their players joined Espanyol, and their history was officially merged into the club from Cornea. Espanyol also has the honor of winning the last edition of the competition in 1940. Just prior to that, during the Spanish Civil War, there was a competition called the Mediterranean League that was contested between teams from Catalonia and the Valencian community. Barca just beat out Espanyol, with Girona and Valencia tying for fourth with 17 points. The next season, the war prevented Valencian teams to travel, so Barca won not only the Catalan Championship, but also the Catalan League, beating at UE Sants by six points for the title. And while it probably goes without saying, Francisco Franco's forces winning the day in the Spanish Civil War certainly stopped any idea and any concept of a Catalan League for a long, long time. Now once again, here's where the timeline gets a bit fuzzy, because FC Barcelona, as of 1920, were competing in the very first edition of the Liga, of which they won the first edition of the Liga. They, along with Real Madrid, Athletic Club, Real Sociedad, and Basque sides Hecho and Real Union, 
all of which qualified as winners of the Copa del Rey. Atletico Madrid, Espanyol, and Sea Europa all qualified as Copa del Rey runners-up, and the 10th and final team was decided through a knockout tournament that was won by Racing Santander. So as you can tell with that 10, there was a heavy influence of vast sides in that first edition of La Liga, with Catalonia actually second on the list with three teams. I already mentioned CE Europa, which unlike many of the teams that you may not have heard of that are now dissolved, CE Europa is still maybe not going strong, but still very much alive 115 years after being founded. They just finished up playing in the fourth tier of Spanish football, but will unfortunately be playing in the fifth tier next season after being relegated. They won the Catalan Championship in their golden era of the 1920s, beating FC Barcelona in 1923 to the title in a playoff they won 1-0. The 1923 Copa del Rey saw them down Sevilla and Sporting Gijón, before falling to the powerhouse of Athletic Club 1-0 at the newly built Le Court Stadium. They finished second in the Catalan Championship four more times that decade, getting the invite to the Liga in 1929, and playing three seasons in the top division before relegation. While they have never returned, a combination of financial troubles in the 1930s that we already discussed pushed them down the tables, and with some poor results, it doomed them in the lower divisions for a while. But they did finally have some more success in the late 90s, 70 years after being last in the spotlight. They won the Copa Catalunya in both 1997 and 98, beating FC Barcelona both times. They won 3-1 in 1997 against Bobby Robson's side, and won 4-3 on penalties in 1998 after a 1-0 draw. The third cup came in 2015, topping Girona 2-1. Oh no, Dan, another cup? Yes, but we'll make it quick. So back in 1989, after the dictatorship was no more, the Catalan Football Federation started a new competition for the region on the back of another competition that had started called the Government Cup in 1984. And the participation from Barcelona and Espanyol raised the profile of said competition. It's seen some different variations over the years and varying degrees of participation from the larger clubs, with the short of it being that if Barca and Espanyol try, they usually come home with the title. But Barca almost never goes with their best 11, still winning a record 9 times and finishing runners up 10 times. There have been 15 different winners of the Copa Catalunya, with CE Ospelolet the reigning champions, having won in the 2019-20 season. On four occasions, a sister competition, the Supercopa de Catalunya, has taken place that has been contested by either Barcelona and Espanyol or Barcelona and Girona. Barca were the victors twice, Espanyol once, and Girona won the last version of that competition in 2019. Alright, so if you're still here, I don't want this history lesson to go too much longer, but I do want to mention the other five teams that have taken part in the Liga over the years. Sabadell spent the longest in the first division, 14 seasons actually, and are currently playing in the third division, having been relegated last season from the second. They are historically the third most successful team in Catalonia, making the 1935 Copa del Rey final before falling to Sevilla. Domestically, they first arrived in the Liga for the 1943-44 season, and got as high as fifth for the 1946-47 season, finishing above Real Madrid. But it wasn't until their longest stretch in the Liga from 1965 to 1972 when they had their best days. It was a long way up for the team that was founded in 1903, but in the 1968-69 season, they finished fourth, earning them a spot in the Intercities Fairs Cup. While they did lose in the first round, as we know today, European football is European football. They last appeared in the Liga from 1986 to 88, and despite a ton of financial troubles for the last 30 years, they are still staying afloat between the 2nd and 3rd divisions. Gymnastique de Tarragona, or Nastique, was founded in 1886, which would have made it the oldest club in Catalonia, but they didn't start their football team until 1914. While they have only won three Copa Catalunyas as their lower tier first place trophies, they have remained in the 2nd or 3rd tier every year since 1942, with the exception of their four seasons in the top division. A three-season stay from 1947-48 to 1949-50 was followed up more than 50 years later by a quick cup of coffee in 2006-07 where they finished 20th. Two other clubs, UE Yeda and CD Kandal, sit at 58th and 60th on the all-time La Liga table out of 62 teams. And even worse, neither of these teams exist today. Yeda played the 1950-51 season in the first division, finishing in 16th place. They were back again in 1993-94, where they finished 19th. In those two seasons combined, they won 13 games, drew 14, and lost 41, finishing with a staggering negative 112 goal differential. The spirit of that club does technically still exist after they were dissolved in 2011, and then Yeda said, we're too big of a city to not have a football team, so they did start one up again. So 
in theory, the spirit of Yeda lives on. Kandal, meanwhile, spent just the 1956-57 season in the first division, winning seven games, drawing eight, and losing 15. They had started out as Barca's reserve team, having won too many promotions and becoming independent of Barcelona in 1956. However, in 1968, they again became the reserve team, and in 1970, they were merged with another junior side, Athletic Catalonia, and formed Barcelona Athletic, as they are again known today as the B team of FC Barcelona. And finally, we have Girona, who first played in the first division in the 2017-18 season. So not only the last of this group, but certainly, with the return now, the most successful of all the other Catalan clubs not named Barcelona and Espanyol at present time. It was a huge accomplishment for a team formed in 1930 and seemingly perennially stuck in the lower divisions to finally reach the top of the mountain. Since Barcelona will be facing off against Girona this season, I'm going to be talking a lot more about that club, I think, as the season goes along, so we'll, I guess, end it there with them. There is also a matter of the Catalonian national team that I could mention, but not only have we run out of time, but I also did a history of that club from a few seasons ago, so just make sure you check on that link. And yeah, I know I look a bit older than I did a few years ago, but the history of the Catalonia national team hasn't changed that much because they're not really an officially, okay, just watch the video, you'll get it. And if you do want an update of that Catalonia national team, I guess put that in the comments below. Let me know if that's really what you need, and I think I guess that video might need an update too. If you're still here, I want to give you such a big thank you for just sitting through this. This honestly probably should have been a research paper more than it should have been a YouTube video or a podcast. But in truth, I do hope that you're able to brag slash bore something for your friends just to showcase your knowledge now of Catalonia football. For me, the most interesting theme that I think stood out was the simple fact that I don't want to say it's a butterfly effect or, or domino effect, but little moments, right? One transfer here, one transfer there, a club having 12 players show up or 15 players show up or 20 players show up. Those were the differences between clubs that are still existing today and ones that have been gone from memory for more than 100 years. Now in the modern age of football where there are 100,000 person stadiums and there's so much money that clubs are just too big to fail at the top, we'll say, again, it was really interesting to go back and say, well, what if this had happened or what if that had happened? And it's a shame that this club that had such great success, but what did success look like, right? It wasn't a parade in a whole city. It wasn't thousands of fans around the globe or millions of fans around the globe celebrating a club. It was just a few people in a small neighborhood in Barcelona, where a lot of those clubs weren't the second, third, or even fourth largest clubs in those cities. They were just trying to make it at the time. They were just a bunch of group of people who wanted to play football together, a game that they had either brought from England, they were studying abroad, or they knew somebody, or they learned it in Switzerland, like Juan Gamper, and were coming through. And speaking of Juan Gamper, there's certainly a lot more to discuss when it comes to the history of Catalan football and the history of FC Barcelona. Whether it's Juan Gamper, the Spanish Civil War, or so many of the wonderful rivalries with all the teams that I already mentioned here. And those are all things that I would love to discuss at a later date. So if you like this and you want to support us more and you want to support more content like this, make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment, all that stuff. But if you're also looking for some merch, we have our merch store. Hit the link down below. Check all that out. But most importantly, again, thank you so much for just sitting through this history lesson with me. And as always, Forza Barca.